Hey everyone, Stu back again from Touch Loops with another video. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at bringing digital beats to life. So, maybe you have a really uh, drum machine heavy beat, which is what we're going to be using, or a beat from a sample pack or a beat you've made yourself, and it's just sounding, you know, a little flat. Or it sounds great, but you kind of want to bring it to life a bit more, give it some more movement, give it some more um, presence, interest. We're going to go through all those things now. Um, and at the end of it, hopefully you'll have a handful of techniques to sort of quickly brighten up a drum loop. So let's jump in. So uh, we're just going to be using one drum loop for this entire tutorial. The uh, Berliner loop from our 808 Raver touch loops pack. It's just a whole bunch of 808 loops and one shots that uh, kind of cover a few different genres, uh, 120 through to 130, from house, hip hop, techno, grime, really beautifully recorded and processed. So straight out the box, they sound awesome, but we're going to go through a bunch of ways that we can make them sound a bit different bit bit more lively at times. So this is the loop as it is out the pack. I mean, it sounds great. Punchy, full of body in the low end, snappy snares, tight hats, everything we'd want from an 808 machine. Um, but let's look at a few different things we can do. So to begin with, we're going to look at how we can use drive and saturation. So starting off with just Ableton's own uh, plugins. I've created an effect rack here with a drum bus and some erosion in. So let's uh, start off with the drum bus. Drum bus, if you don't use it already, is such a useful tool, uh, not only on drums, on so many things, but here I've loaded up the drum bus and I'm using drive, boom, and the boom frequency and the transients uh, uh, parameters. I've mapped them here so that I can automate in those things. So, no drive. You can hear that real squelch and crunch. Um, same with the transients. Tighten the sound up or open it up. And then with the boom here, I set it to the full amount and I can sweep through the frequencies. could be uh, a really great fill uh, at the end of every bar. So in fact, if we, if I just press A on my keyboard, making sure that this, uh, this keyboard uh, button here isn't lit up and we can get to the automation view. If I click on uh, boom frequency and then draw in a couple of nodes, maybe something like this, we can hear how that's now a really great sounding fill. very techno. So yeah, just having a few things mapped here from drum bus, we've already got, you know, control of our transients, a uh, cool boom feature, we can control the drive. And if we add a bit of erosion in, we could maybe map the amount here to macro five. and add a bit of interesting white noise top end. So that's just out the box, they're just Ableton things. Um, and already we can start to shape this beat a little more. If you wanna go a little further, or you know, additional things, Saturn 2 by FabFilter is amazing. So I've just loaded up one of its presets here, Lo-Fi Maker, let's see how that sounds. Ah, oh, awesome. I mean, absolutely loads. If we just uh, load it back to its default setting, we could maybe add some uh, some tube saturation. Maybe we only want to apply that to the higher frequencies. But keep the lower frequencies kind of kind of clean. We could turn it off those or turn it down. Maybe mix with the mix with the EQ a little.
maybe the very brightest hats want to come down a little. I mean, there are so many things in here. Uh, you can go into effects, breakdown, or and then maybe on this mid frequency, we could go to transformer. You know, really shape the sound, shape the sound on a multi-band level. Um, or just run through the presets, see what, see how crazy you can get. And again, with this, uh, we have um, input gain and output gain, so we can and, and mix here, so we can just slightly uh, click on the mix button, and we have the automation here. So that's a hundred. That's fully wet. This is fully dry. we can subtly transform the sound with automation. And finally, in this sort of saturation distortion uh, section, it would be crazy for me not to mention Culture Vulture, which uh, I adore. So I've just dialed in this preset here, this, this sort of um, bunch of settings. I mean, that sound is amazing. This is set to the P2 distortion type uh, probably about 40% mix. That fluttery, squashed, squelchy sound. Ah, I love it. Um, so yeah, this is a really powerful tool for uh, adding a lot of colour, depth, crunch to um, an overdrive to a loop. So yeah, a few little options there for saturation and distortion. Okay, let's use some reverb on the same loop, reverb effects. So I've built this here. Uh, this is the loop again. So I've split the loop into two uh, bands, kind of like how FabFilter was doing. So we have this high band where I've got an EQ, I've rolled everything off under, you know, about 100, and I've applied some room reverb to it. And then I have a low, which is the same signal, but it rolls off a little above 100, but let's put that closer to 100 with nothing on it. So that means from 100 and down, no effects processing is applied. So the low end stays dry, tight, clean, but anything above 100, I can add effects to. So room reverb. So let's hear what that sounds like. Low end. Top end. And I can also control the uh, amount of each of these. Using the, the gain amounts there. Um, and the reverb I've chosen is the hybrid reverb. That also has an EQ in, so I've just rolled that off as well. Again, above 100, just to make sure. Um, and I've chosen just the wooden room preset from early reflections, and I've made sure to set the blend all the way to this convolution impulse response, not the algorithmic reverb, which is also very, very cool. But for this, I just wanted to add a little bit of space, brightness, um, and depth to the top end because drum machines, they're very dry, very crisp sounding, and you might want to put the beat in a space, give it some life in that way, um, which is what I've done here. Uh, maybe, actually, I've just thought it'd be very, very good to just quickly go through how I built this chain. So if I drag the hybrid, hybrid reverb out, delete this. So I've got the loop, I've dragged on my reverb, which is now going to be applied to the whole beat. You know, with this EQ, if I take the EQ down, we can hear that. So roll it off to 100. That's a really nice sound. Love that. And then what I do is select hybrid reverb and I press command G. And now I've created an audio effect group. And this bottom tab here, this is the chain. So because this has the hybrid reverb on, I'm gonna select it, command R to rename, and I'm gonna call that high. And then I'm going to command D to duplicate it. So now we have two. I'm gonna rename this one low, and I'm gonna remove the hybrid reverb. So now I'm getting the signal run through a reverb and not run through a reverb. And then if I go to my EQ here, I go to EQ8, drag it onto the first one, put it in front of the reverb and roll it off to 100. And then again, EQ8, go to the low one. Uh, we don't want any low end cough, but we 
do want to drag this down to 100. So that's how I did it. Now I've got this reverberated everything above 100 chain and this dry unreverberated everything under 100 chain. And the options really go on and on now. If let's say I want to only apply some, if we go into audio effects, uh, I don't know, drum bus again, or why don't we try something like overdrive just on the low end? So here's our low end. But we don't want that applied to our top. Top still stays clean. Pretty cool. So yeah, just a cool quick way of um, breaking down the sound into, I mean, you could add a mid frequency as well if you just wanted the highs, the mids and the lows, so you have more control over hi-hats, snares and kicks. But um, yeah, really useful tool I find for creating different senses of space and then clashing them together or whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, simple and uh, really useful. So another trick, probably the easiest of the bunch, take the loop. Let me delete this so I can show you how. Delete, uh, you have the loop here, grab your channel, Command D. So now we've duplicated it. Don't pay attention to this yet. Uh, press R. And now we have the loop playing forwards and backwards. Drop this down, I just drop it down about 10 dB. And that sounds like this. is pretty cool but just to clean up the bottom end I'm going to add again just an EQ I'm going to roll this off to about 1k this being the reversed signal and then mix that in how you like and again if I just press A on my keyboard to bring up the mixer I can fade in this reversed version wherever I like. So maybe something like this. If I hold down option, bring up the curve tool, sort of curve those in there. And just subtly bring in the same signal, but reversed with all the low end taken out. Really easy. If you want to do this just on the one uh, channel, let's delete this and load up Pitch Hack, which is another part of Ableton Suite's uh, collection. And this will kind of do the same thing. So if I turn it straight to uh, to dry, we have the dry beat again, turn reverse all the way up, and you can set the rate here, which will make sense in a sec. So now we're hearing forwards and backwards. maybe bring the level down of the pitch hat signal and just mix it in. And now we're hearing again, uh, elements of the beat backwards within the beat playing forwards. Um, uh, this gives you more of that ability to change the rate of that reverse signal. So you can have it set to something really strange like, like this. And then recycle is like feedback. And then of course, pitch. Pretty cool. So yeah, pitch hack, another great option. While well, we're keeping things simple uh, and often overlooked, well, maybe not overlooked, but I would like to use it more technique for livening up a drum loop is literally to just take a part of it out. So as the loop repeats here, I'm just gonna take the first kick out. Awesome, uh, classic DJ tool. And maybe even if I select, uh, if I press A to get out of automation view, select where the next hit is, Command E, 
to chop the signal. Option and drag back and then R, we can have it reverse into itself. Nice. I like to just turn this clip down. So if I double click on it, go over to gain, pull that down, I don't know, 8 dB roughly. And you get sort of a softer sweep in and more of the transient hit of the next actual forwards playing hit. Maybe the second time I'll take out those last two hits. And maybe here I will command E, duplicate. Cool. So, you know, taking things out, reversing them, chopping it up. Simple, but really, I always find that taking the downbeat out the second time round is just so interesting. Just that sudden pause. Love it. You know, time that with a, a downbeat crash or something here, or maybe cut all the music out for those two bars. Great technique. Gives your ears a split second to figure out what's going on, and then the beat comes back in. Awesome. Okay, another option. Let's layer it up with a live kit. What better way to make a drum beat sound more alive than to layer it up with an actual live kit? So the quickest way to do this, grab your um, loop, drag it down onto a MIDI clip that I've already loaded a drum rack onto. That's quite important. If this had nothing on it, it would just convert this MIDI track to an audio track. Um, so here we have the MIDI. Should be quite straightforward because it's quite a simple beat. So we've got this here. I might take out these kicks here. Uh, and then we have the beat playing on a grid, on a drum, uh, drum rack grid. And then I've just grabbed this British live vintage kit from Ableton's own drum collection. I'm going to drag that onto this channel. Solo it, let's see how it sounds. So the great thing about this uh, converting a beat to MIDI is that it's very clever at figuring out what's a kick, what's a snare, what's a hi-hat. Um, here, you could see it got confused and it thought that these hits were both kicks and snares, which, you know, they probably have the same frequency information in, which is why I pulled them out. But it saved a lot of the velocity information, uh, which is great. So let's play those together, maybe turn the live kit down a little. Maybe you don't want the kick drum. So I'm going to select all of them at the same time by selecting the uh, piano roll key for where the kick is. I'm just going to uh, delete those. Great. And while we're here, why not add, I don't know, some, uh, some variation in. So we know this is the snare. Why don't we put one here, here, and then maybe, what else have we got? If we press the little headphone symbol here. Why not put a ride symbol here at the start? That mid tom there. That low tom there. Let's see how that sounds. So good. Really quick, simple way of uh, adding some interest to this without really doing anything. Um, if we wanted to maybe blend these two sounds together a bit more, I'm gonna shift click to select both channels, command G to make a group with both of them in. And then I'm gonna go over to my audio effects. Let's add a little bit of glue compression. Bit of soft clipping. And then why not add something, I don't know, like a vocoder. Let's try this. I'm gonna set this to uh, modulator. Forty bands. That's a really cool sound. Uh, it's quite quiet, so let's grab a utility. 
boost that signal. Really cool. Alter the, the range, frequency range. Maybe take some of that top out. Play around with the formant. Ooh. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, really weird. So adding all this extra character from this live kit and then running that through some compression of vocoder or anything, really, you can really start to get some cool, very unique sounds pretty fast. Uh, just out of interest, let's try one more thing. Let's add, hmm, uh, there is a frequency shifter here, which I really love. I mean, that's great. Yeah, you just really mess around with it. Oh, wow. Really cool. So there we go. You know, just this idea of mixing your beat with a live kit or any other kit using the audio to MIDI tool, grouping them and running them both through some global effects, really squashing those sounds together uh, will quickly give you new, interesting, lively versions of the loop. Okay, last tip. Uh, here's our loop again. I'm going to load up a simpler from Ableton's instruments. Uh, then with simpler selected and displayed down here, I'm going to grab my loop. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to drag it down until we get this little plus icon. Let go. And there we go. Move this down to slice mode. I'm going to mute the original loop. And now we have the same beat laid out but as default within simpler, it will slice by transient. You can change this to slice by beat. So quarter notes, half, eight, sixteenths. Uh, but for now, let's keep it set to transient. Playback mono. Um, I'm gonna select the length of the original loop, but on the channel that it is now simpler. Shift, Command, M to make a, mu uh, a new MIDI clip. Oh, am I getting this wrong? Shift. Command M. Yep, there we go. Uh, my trackpad can be a little funny. Uh, now, I know that the first slice here, the first hit is on C1. So let's navigate down to C1. There it is. Add a clip in. And if we do this, we're ascending up the piano roll and through the slices, the transient slices. So I like to make uh, eight, eight of them. Select them all, Command D to duplicate, and then just press the up button. And now if I select just these, we've changed the rhythm. Because it's not slicing uh, by uh, beat, it's slicing by transient. Obviously, all the different transients are different lengths. The different hits are different lengths. So we're getting this slightly different rhythm. As opposed to. Um, and all we've done is drag it in simpler, set it to transient mode, and uh, add MIDI. You know, we can find the hits. So we know C1 is a kick. So maybe I want another kick here. And maybe I want another kick here. Let's see how that sounds. Pretty cool. And again, there are these controls so we can transpose the beat, add a bit more uh, fade out, a bit more fade in. Change the sensitivity. 
So what I did there was by lowering the sensitivity, it's ignoring some of these softer, smaller transient hits and only paying attention to the loudest ones. Really cool. Really simple way of uh, chopping up the beat, making something different with it. So there we go. Uh, hopefully that's given you some really quick, simple ideas, getting a little bit more life out of those beats. Um, if you like this video, uh, I hope... No.